Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chrisom, and I'd like to welcome you to this conversation about your Kundalini experience. Uh, and I would like to welcome my co-host, Amelia Santara, who made it through those wonderful storms that hit the coast of Ireland. Hello, Amelia. Hi, Chris. I'm out here safe and sound. It has been an amazing few weeks here with storms, so it's good to be here tonight. It's good to have you safe and sound. Um, uh, today, uh, our subject will be along the lines of obsessive-compulsive uh, tendencies that uh, the kundalini can bring on and pre-kundalini can bring on, and also the levels of of ego control that we want to try that 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 the ego will want to try to stay in when the kundalini comes, and there can be a, a quite a bit of tug and war between the the ego and the higher uh, uh, frequencies of the awakening. Uh, but we have some announcements, Amelia. Yes, Chrism. I'm announcing the seminar again, and we're getting nearer and nearer to it, just a couple, a few more weeks now, and they will be happening. The first seminar is in New York. Now, that is almost full, but two spaces have become available. So if anybody is interested in attending the seminar in New York, do drop me a line at kundalinimatters at gmail.com. If you have any questions or you have any interest, any interest, and we can um, begin to talk about that. Um, it's 35 miles north of New York City. It's a lovely venue, and it's going to be a really, really nice gathering. It's a small gathering of 12 people, so um, it's going to be really, really nice. Um, in Ireland, then, a weekend, the following weekend, on the 29th and 30th of March, there is another seminar, and there are more spaces and more availability for that. And again, this is led by CRISM, and it's a two-day residential seminar. And um, it's really a great thing. It's excellent if you are already on the Kundalini path or if you're striving to, to get there. And you can come and you can spend time with Chrism, with other Kundalini people, and spend time with your own inner divine. So again, if you have any inquiries about that, if you're living in Europe and you have an interest in flying to Dublin, just know that you will be collected from the airport and transported, brought down. It's only a 30-minute drive to where the venue is. So do write to me at kundalinimatters at gmail.com. And I would be delighted to speak with you. We have um, seven people already signed up for that. And it's going to be a wonderful and interesting seminar as well. We will be visiting the ancient megalithic site of Newgrange on the Sunday with Chris, and he'll be leading us there. And the last time we had the seminar in this area, that was a really wonderful experience in a Kundalini context, you know, and Chris and is fantastic to lead this sort of uh, this part of the um, the seminar because you will you will begin to see things in a different way you know these places in a different a different light and things begin to unfold and we had very real and tactile Kundalini experiences there and so yes so please do contact me if you're anywhere in Europe and you have an interest Kundalini Matters at gmail dot com that's this Chris. Thanks. Thank you, Amelia. Yeah, that's that's Kundalini Matters at Gmail dot com and and wow, the uh, the experiences at Newgrange are just amazing. And yeah, uh, anybody in Europe, I would love to meet you and, and in the New York area as well as uh, Southern Canada on the east uh, eastern uh, uh, areas of Southern Canada. Anybody that wants to come down from Canada would love to see you in New York as well. Okay, so. Uh, Let's go ahead and begin. Uh, often in the uh, Kundalini awakening, uh, pre-Kundalini refinement scenario, shall we say, a person will have levels of what would seem like obsessive compulsive disorder. You'll want to make sure that the, uh, the pictures are straight on the wall and that the silverware is absolutely straight. <laughs> Perfect looking, and this this is actually uh, an aspect of the refinement process. It's it is not 
so much of an obsessive compulsive disorder. In other words, you're not, oh, excuse me, you're not washing your hands until they bleed. You're not licking the doorknobs. You're not doing any of, 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 of the uh, symptoms that a person with the with uh, obsessive compulsive disorder has. But you do have levels of, of uh, compulsion that the Kundalini will give to you. You will feel the compulsion to, to make things balanced, really. I mean... When you, when you have a crooked picture on the wall, it looks, you know, it, it kind of makes the, the wall seem sort of out of balance. Or if the, you know, when a, when a, when a person is setting a table or things of that nature, you know, the, the, the picture that you get of the plate, the fork, the knife, the spoon, the glass, whatever you've got, a person with kundalini will want to make that absolutely straight. Often it's, it's a compulsion. It is not a disorder. So please don't misinterpret uh, some of your OCD symptoms as as OCD. It's not the disorder. We'll just call it uh, OCK, Obs- <laughs> obsessive compulsive kundalini. Okay. So with the OCK, I want you to realize that it is okay. It is not something that is anything wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. It is aspect of the refinement scenario happens as a person begins to enter into the kundalini in a in a much stronger format uh now yeah i mean if 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 you happen to have ocd the disorder and kundalini at the same time well then it'll be a little bit more difficult to uh to try to to feather your way through that uh but if you're doing anything that causes you to bleed like washing your hands till they bleed or you know licking doorknobs, anything of an obsessive compulsive aspect uh completely different from the OCK, the 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 or the obsessive uh uh compulsive kundalini. Uh, obsessive compulsive kundalini is just a way of showing the ego and the outer person what the inner scenario is beginning to change into. As the inward person begins to come more into an alignment, and I use that word on purpose, the alignment of the kundalini within them. And so when I, when I talk about alignment, I'm talking about the Ida and the Pingala and the Shusumna. The Ida, of course, being uh, one of the major arteries of the kundalini energy that extend from the base of the spine uh, to uh, around the eyes, and then they terminate at each nostril. And then, of course, the uh, the pingala, which is on the other side, the right side, and that extends from the base of the t- of the spine to the other side of the body, the right side of the body, which is the sacred male, and that terminates at the other nostril. And then, of course, the shusumna, which is the main artery, which is the spinal cord, and within that spinal cord, you have the chitrini channel, C H I T R I N I. And uh, that's how you spell the Chitrini channel. And you could probably Google that, and they'll give you some sort of an explanation. But this is one of the main arteries for the Kundalini to go from the base of the spine and out the fontanelle, or where the fontanelle used to be on us before it, uh, the, the bones converged. And uh, it, it, the, the energy fountains out the top of the head. Before all of that can occur a certain level of balance and alignment has to be given. And this is given in sometimes incremental ways upon the person that, and gravitating to more, uh, a, more uh, abrupt or aggressive ways uh, with the kundalini, such as, uh, uh, you know, uh, a more water intake and, and uh changing your dietary standards, changing your behaviors to other people, changing how you have been into what you are becoming. Uh, so, you know, this is a very, very, very important aspect of it. And, and for those of you that have Kundalini, I'm sure that you, you can remember going through these types of experiences. And for those of you that are looking to have this experience, well, this is something that you can come to look at and, and maybe experience and then accept except as a just a part 
of your Kundalini Awakening Refinement Program. And what I mean by that refinement is that uh, you're beginning to refine yourself away from, from living your life on a purely egotistical level to, to bringing your life to a more uh, compulsive uh, um, communication, opening that communication of, of, of uh, being, you know, having a compulsion to do this or that, which is really the compulsion is the directive from the Kundalini to your consciousness to do certain things. Uh, straighten up that uh, picture on the wall, straighten up the silverware on the, on the dinner table, things of that nature. Um, you want to you want to make sure that uh, some of the obsessive uh, compulsive Kundalini stuff is not centered around the ego. So, in other words, we don't need to be combing our hair for like an hour and a half in the mirror in the bathroom, getting ready for school. We don't need to to put the makeup on and then oh my god, I made a mistake. Wipe all the makeup off and then start all over again in order to get it just that absolute perfect thing uh that that is a that can be more of an expansion of the ego appetite rather than than of a of a kundalini uh, directive and so really really look to see that that your ego is not being aggrandized uh with regards to to what you're being compelled to do because the ego will sometimes compel you, oftentimes compel you to do certain things. And typically it's the old way that you have been doing things, the way that you've been doing things your whole life. And now the Kundalini said, okay, my child, enough of this. Now it's time to mature into a a person that's having the Kundalini refinement protocols given to them from me itself. And so as you as you feel yourself being compelled to do certain things, compelled to forgive, being compelled to be tolerant, being compelled to to understand more of the patterns that you're experiencing experiencing in life that reflect a new design and a new way of thinking about how you want to be in this world, how you want to live your life. Uh, this this level of, of, of compulsion is extremely important that you respond to in a positive, favorable way. Kundalini does not make mistakes, and it knows how you're living. It's a conscious force, and it, it understands that, that your ego will want you to do certain things the ego way. And the Kundalini will just gently, at first, gently override the ego and say, Look, I want you to straighten up the pictures on your wall. <laughs> I want you to I want you to set that table, young man, young lady. <laughs> you set that table and you make sure those silverware is straight. <laughs> you make sure that glass doesn't have a single fingerprint on it. <laughs> Any of you have ever worked in a restaurant, you know what I mean. Uh so yeah, really, really take care to look at this, to feel it, to realize what is occurring and to respond. Respond according. By that I mean you obey what the Kundalini is asking you through compulsions to do. Compulsions will often be a way that the Kundalini communicates to you. You, you know, sometimes, yeah, you'll get the you'll get a, a a giant talking snake standing in front of you saying, "Okay, look, Tristan, you know you 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 need to learn how to straighten up the pictures on your wall. You need to learn how to make your bookshelf alphabetical by." author or title or both if you can <laughs> I'm not sure you can do that <laughs> you need to to have to have your house be absolutely spotless and everything needs to be in its place and you need to have those vacuum tracks going just a certain way in order to to feel the level of comfort that the kundalini will give you as you respond favorably to the compulsions that it is giving you these compulsions are not a disorder. <laughs> it will, it, you know, it will have some mirroring phenomena associated with OCD. But when, remember, this is OCK, OSC. Okay, this is the OCK, and the OCD is something very, very different. It's usually uh, a bit more 
uh, it can be self-destructive in some ways. Okay, Kundalini will never be self-destructive in those ways if you respond to it in a positive, surrendered, favorable fashion. Your Kundalini really is there to empower you, and we're not often uh, accustomed to having an intangible at first force begin to reconstruct our life and you know give us a way to do things that we've already been a different way but now it wants us to do it this way uh so in these ways we can become resistant to what the kundalini is asking us to do and compelling us to do and i don't want you to resist the compulsion remember that you know if you're being compelled to do something to hurt another person or to hurt yourself that is not the kundalini the kundalini will never ever ever hurt you that way but you if you if you decide to live through the through the angle of your ego well you can hurt yourself that way while the kundalini is coming because once again the kundalini is an amazingly strong amplification force of of energy upon your body and if you choose uh to to have fear and you inject fear and you inject resistance and you inject anger as i did into the kundalini well then you can have an, an extreme level of kundalini syndrome set down on you and you know that can be kind of a hard uh kind of quicksand to pull yourself out of and uh, and i don't want any of you to have that experience at all now some of you may have that karmic uh karmic burden uh, placed upon you just by virtue of the past lives and these things need to come into balance and yet the kundalini doesn't come to a person in order to kill them the kundalini is not interested in your death it is interested in your life and the enlightenment of the life that you are living and so yes even if you have to go into the hard areas of kundalini syndrome uh if you if you really can listen to the compulsions that the kundalini are giving you they are more proactive towards your life living your life organizing your life in a certain pattern that allows refinement to occur to you but without uh incurring any kind of a death or an injury to you the only thing that will really be screaming the loudest will be your ego and and even though that sounds oh that's just like a throwaway it's not because the ego is what we hear most of the time and so as as the ego is screaming screaming oh i don't i like my pictures crooked on the wall thank you very much go somewhere else or you know if you inject fear into the picture oh i feel like i'm being possessed and it wants me to straighten up my dinner table no i resist this i like my <laughs> dinner table the way it is <laughs> different analogies here anyway you need to really 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 understand look up your symptoms on the web i'm mean, go to kundalini awakening systems com and look at the symptoms for kundalini and see if your phenomena matches up and if it does match up then begin to listen to the to the uh to the kundalini compulsion coming to you and respond favorably to those to those compulsions they are not designed to drain you of your strength they are only designed to refine you into a pattern of of uh behaviors that are conducive to the kundalini energy coming into and changing your emotional outlook changing your outlook changing the physical outlook and the and the psychological and the spiritual outlook so really be aware of this and know that you have been blessed by this energy very it's a very strong blessing it's a severe blessing and in the severity of that blessing uh you know the the keys to making it through this blessing is to surrender the control of your life to the kundalini and yes i know i know a lot of you are going to be shaking your heads like what you know, I've, I've been doing perfectly well in my life. Thank you very much, Mr. Chrisom. I don't need you to say give my life over to some some energetic force in me that's that's forcing me to, to, to straighten up my dinnerware. <laughs> I can understand that. I can understand that. I can completely understand that. And yet, 
That is exactly what I'm suggesting because it doesn't stop with the pictures on the wall or how you how you place your silverware before you eat food. It continues into how you think about life, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about other people. What levels of tolerance do you have? What levels of courage do you have? What levels of love are you expressing into the the social environment around you? And what levels of love are you expressing into the inner environment within you? How do you feel about you? Do you forgive yourself? Do you forgive other people? Are you tolerant of of the the irritations that that the the social environment around you can bring? All of these areas and more are brought about by the the uh, you know the OCK, the obsessive compulsive Kundalini. Listen to this. Now let's see. I have to get back in here. And if you have uh, a question about this or any other part of your Kundalini Awakening experience, please call this number, uh, area code 347-934-0026. And Amelia will will answer your call and say hello to you. And uh, uh, eventually, if I have my eyes open, <laughs> I will see that... Uh, that you're there waiting to ask a question. I must say that I get into this, the Kundalini just kind of takes over and my eyes close and I'm just talking. Uh, so forgive me if, if it takes a little while. And Amelia, please feel free to interrupt me vocally uh, if you have somebody who's waiting for a question or if you yourself and me have a question that you'd like to, to ask. Uh, so continuing with this, as it begins to to send you various levels of compulsions. So what I mean by various levels of compulsions, and it, it, go, it, it, it will mature from just straightening the pictures on the wall or, you know, reorganizing your desk or your library or, you know, uh, folding your clothes a certain way. It will progress into direct uh, compulsions on how to behave. How do you behave with, with people at work, how you behave with your boss, how you behave with your kids or your spouse or your boyfriend, your girlfriend, uh, how you behave with society in general, uh, often these behaviors will become quite different than what you're used to. And so if you know you're having Kundalini, if you've gone to Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com, you, and you've gone down to the to the little chart that gives you the ability to compare how uh, the phenomena is occurring with you, and you say, "Okay, uh, I may have this Kundalini." And so, begin to listen and listen to your feelings with regards to how the Kundalini is bringing you to do a certain thing. Uh, one of the things that can occur uh, within this subject is the Definition of truth. Your truth, your personal truths are up for change. That is on the table for the Kundalini because the being is that uh, your personal truth may have been, uh, you know, as strong as a cement block all the way up to this point in your life where you're having the Kundalini and that all of a sudden the Kundalini begins to insert other levels of truth that shatter the block that you've lived your life by. Uh, now, that sounds pretty. Uh, that that sounds pretty extreme. Well, it is extreme. Kundalini is not an energy that is just you know soft and you know like Tinkerbell in the. It's, just, it's not like that. I and mean, sometimes it can be like that. Sometimes it is very soft and loving and and and. Con- very, very considerate of a person's feelings. At other times, if it, if the person is resisting, well, you know, it can be somewhat, uh, shall we say, more aggressive in its approach. And with regards to truth, as you open up to levels of truth, sometimes uh, you begin to understand the levels of illusion that we're living in right now. And that may cause you to have a level of fear or anger. And the fear, our anger, are, are fed by 
a, a slowly growing knowledge of supreme levels of truth that you're being introduced to by the Kundalini. And you'll find discrepancies in how we are living as a society uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in this world and how we are living really within a, a very, very strong level of illusion and how some, some people are using the illusion as a way to to collect power over other people or power over the environment or power over the commercial interest or power over money or power over, you know, a, a spouse or a boyfriend, girlfriend, kids, people at work, etc. And this level of, of OCK, obsessive compulsive Kundalini, uh, will, will often lead one into areas of, of, of the uh, of uncovering levels of deception you'll all of a sudden have developed a truth meter that is quite strong quite powerful but still in its in its in its very very early developmental forms and without the levels of ego control this level of discernment can really lead a person into problems uh, because all of a sudden they become very paranoid and then as the kundalini actually raises its energetic force uh, within you and, and begins to uh, infuse your kidneys and your adrenal glands, uh, your adrenaline that comes into the bloodstream will really promote levels of fear response to you in your life. And, and I must say that uh, for those of you that don't know, we have a bit of a, of a, uh, a rescue uh, we have a little bit of an animal rescue uh, operation here. And so what you're hearing is a cock, cockatoo from Australia and a, a, cock, a, a gaufin cockatoo and a, another green parrot-like bird, very nice. Uh, they're kind of joining in the conversation. We also have uh, some turtles and dogs and cats and goldfish, et cetera, et cetera. And so if you hear, if it sounds like I'm in the Amazon, well, <laughs> I'm not. I'm here in, in Santa Rosa. And this, these are our fellow mortals who are also part of this conversation. So as this level of, of, uh, of change is occurring, as the adrenaline goes into your bloodstream, well, it, will, it will join often with the person's attitude of fear about the illusions that that we're all living by within the Western technological societies. And this level of paranoia is greatly exacerbated by uh, the adrenaline in the bloodstream, and a person becomes very paranoid, uh, extremely paranoid, and afraid, and angry. And uh, it can lead a person into areas that are... How does, how, I'm, I'm having a hard time. I was there. I, re, I remember that 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 paranoid feeling, the paranoia and the fear and the, you know, the black helicopters and the, the, the men in black and the ETs and the, the uh, reptilians and the, 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 the dirty politicians and all of these things. And, and the, you know, the sad part of this is that much of what you may be feeling about the illusions and the abuse of other people by by smaller groups of people is true and and in many ways that can just feed the flame of your paranoia and i'm going to ask you to just begin to take a step back from this you don't need to feel anger or fear or upset because you have been given a greater level of truth identification than those who are who are maybe a little deeper ensconced in the levels of illusion that we're living in. Uh, you have been given a gift to be able to see into the truth and things, and you have to remember that you chose to be here. You chose to be in the Western technological world uh, this date, this time in February, during this time of, of social, uh, social expression. You know, I'm not going to say social calamity, even though that's happening, because I also realize that there's a lot of positive social developments that are also happening at the same time. Well, 
Hello, everyone. I don't know what happened. I lost the internet for a short time. Um, let's see if anybody is able to hear me. I don't see Amelia on here. Wow, that was kind of strange. But I'll go ahead and continue just in case this is still recording. Uh, so, yes, yes. Um, ah, here, somebody here. Okay. Amelia. Hi, Chris, and we had to visit a bit there. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, uh, well, first of all, does anyone have any questions? Um, no, we were having a conversation because none of us could hear you, and I was locked out of the studio. That's why I left. And so your voice was gone there for quite a few minutes. Nobody could hear you. Well, now that says you, you were you were probably. You were probably recorded. Oh, that's okay. Well, <laughs> probably that's true, because <laughs> I can still see that the the timer was still uh, going. Uh, so, yes, yes. yeah. My apologies, everyone. This is uh, a little bit beyond our control. This has to do with radio. Uh, so, um, do you recall was when my voice left? Oh, Lord, I do not prison know, but, I mean, it would have been one second now. Anybody in the archives? So, it started at um, half past 11. It started at, perfect, at half past the hour. So, 10 minutes ago. So, according to my watch, about five minutes ago. If that's half past, if that's when it yeah, happened. Yeah, well, I'm right. looking at, I'm looking at the, I'm, yeah, I'm looking at the time. Oh, yeah, your watch, okay. I make it 20 to now. Okay, all right. Well, a bit about the obsessive compulsive entrance into to conspiracy and fear and levels of of uh, distrust for governments, distrust for other people, distrust in general that are that are fed by uh, a person's level of perceiving uh, truth through the the levels of illusion that we're constantly uh, uh, living with and, you know, not understanding it and, and going into fear over it, uh, getting maybe a little heavily involved in some of the, the wartime battles. Oh, is this Eileen? Come on. I'll push her through now. Okay. Hello. Oh, actually, Chris, I just spoke with Steve, and he can't hear you either in the chat room. So it sounds like you're not going out in the chat room. Really? Well, I wish yeah. I knew what to do about that. <laughs> this is, is this Eileen? Yes, it is. Can you hear? Not on the computer. It went off a few minutes ago. Oh. Well, it's still recording. Well, in my own yeah, it is. So I would suggest just continuing. My apologies, For everybody. A while my apologies, everyone in the uh, in the uh, chat room and, and in these various areas. Uh, don't know what's going on with Blog Talk Radio, but it did cut out on us, and uh, we're back. We're recording. Uh, but evidently there are some people right now who are not able to hear uh, hear the show in the chat room. And once again, I, I extend my apologies to you. I appreciate the time that you've taken to come and listen to the show live. And uh, once again, my apologies. Uh, as we continue, um, oh, and uh, Eileen or Amelia, can you let me know if anybody begins to to hear the show again in the chat room? Let me know, please. Don't don't be afraid to interrupt me, okay? Can you hear me? Here, I'll put you on here. Okay. 
Yes, yes, Chris, and I can hear you, and I'm able to communicate with people, so I've given them your apologies, and I've asked them, because it's beyond your control, but I've asked them to let us know if they can hear again. Actually, at the same time that you went, your voice vanished, and there was a large group here, and at least five or six of them vanished at the exact same time. They're gone, you know? So we have only three people. I, I think something trip the uh the internet here in the in the United States maybe I don't know but I didn't hear any kind of a well anyway so if you can ask yeah. those three people and and let let me know if they're hearing uh the show if that has you know resumed for them uh, we're still recording evidently <laughs> so we'll just carry on and uh thank you okay. Amelia and Eileen very much and I'm going to I'm just going to put the two of you in the blue here. So hopefully this is going to be heard, but I'll just go ahead and say it anyway, whether it is or not. When you have the OCK, the obsessive compulsive Kundalini, and you, you, you get into these conspiracy theories, you can really pull yourself off track to a large degree because you'll see the injustices that are being uh, done by one group of people upon another group of people. And you'll see the level of illusion and lies uh, that are corrupting the truth that, that this world lives by. And, and I, and I, I don't want you not to involve yourself so much. I just would, what I'm suggesting is that you take yourself out of the hatred and you always, always, Strive to have emotional balance, even within these levels of illusion. And you need to understand that there's no accident that people are born in war zones. You know, in, in many, many people need to have that experience in order to balance a certain karmic item that they have to balance in this lifetime. And, and in, in many cases, that involves being in a war, or being a victim of a war, or being a, a perpetrator of a war. And you need to understand that. Uh, uh, and it doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right that, other, that, that the strong will, will uh, uh, undermine the, the, the ability of the, of the weak to survive. Uh, doesn't make it right, and, and for sure you can help if you wish, but really do your best to pull yourself out of anger or fear or revenge or having a grudge against the aggressor or adopting mannerisms of those inv- involved in the conflict that really you have nothing to do with. You don't, you don't have this karma to choose to have it. Okay. And with the OCK, this can really, 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 really be a be a, a a situation situation that you want to look closely at. And this this really has to do with that obsessive compulsive aspect of the Kundalini as as you're experiencing it. And and so realize that. Look at that. Realize that. Understand that. Now let's look at at, at the idea of control. Many times uh, we will try to control the way Kundalini does this. And uh, in my opinion, incorrect uh, understandings of Kundalini and writers that write about the Kundalini, they'll say, well, you can make the Kundalini do this and I can make my Kundalini do that. And when I raise my Kundalini, it just does this, this or that. And, and I, I need you to understand that Kundalini is not your marionette. It is not your little puppet on a string that you can go, okay, Kundalini, now I want you to do this. It doesn't work that way. And if somebody is telling you it does, then I will suggest that you politely, gently walk away. You know, as they will say, you should walk away from me. <laughs> so, so it becomes a level of discernment for you. It becomes a level of discernment for you. The Kundalini does not need your your permission to do a certain thing. It doesn't need you to say, okay, you can rise up the spine now. Okay, there you go. It doesn't give you the control over that aspect of itself. It is a divine force. It doesn't need your help or your permission 
to do its its job with you. It has its own uh, understandings of what you need to have done with you in order to begin and to to mature within your enlightenment protocol. We want to control everything, and we're going to want to control the OCK. And the OCK, in some way, the Kundalini itself is going to uh, really, really amplify your level of a desire to control. You'll want to control everything. You'll want to control the air. You know, you want to control the sun. You'll want to control everything around you, and you just need to look at that and go, you have no control. Divinity has control. Divinity knows you better than you know yourself, and it will have its control over you. And your best practice is to surrender to the control that divinity is insisting upon you. It is no great weakness to surrender to a divine force. Okay? It is no shame. There is nothing. It's not like surrendering to an enemy. It's surrendering to that God force within you. And that is a, that, that to me is a, a very appropriate surrender. It's giving your life to God. It is, and it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're going to become a priest or a nun or a, you know, some sort of a holy person. It doesn't mean that you can't continue to, to work for, for the job that you're working at or, you know, Sometimes, yeah, it will insist on a change in how you procure money, how you survive in this in this environment, on this world at this time. Sure, sure. It may say, okay, Kristen, now you need to become a, a duck feeder. And, uh, and I'll go out and I'll feed the ducks every day. And that's what I'll do for the rest, you know, until the Kundalini says no. But, you know, I'm kind of joking with duck feeding, but it will... Uh, it will begin to sculpt your new life. And you really need to give up your control and trust the divine within you. Trust it with your life. Trust it with, with knowing what is best for you. And you will feel that compulsion. You will feel that level of, of, of gifting that the Kundalini is giving you. And as you uh, surrender to these things, great levels of bliss and joy and love and happiness will 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 shower down upon you and and shower up from within inside you fountaining out the top of your head your heart will expand tremendously i mean you will really feel the 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 kundalini caress you as you begin to adopt its uh guidelines for your uh, expression of life in this world it will really begin to reward you and, and to help you understand that yes you are indeed doing the right thing you are indeed doing the right thing um, and I'm going to ask let's see uh, Eileen I'd like you to come on board here hello hi Chris I'm on here hey you sound good you sound very well uh, can you tell uh, people how the Kundalini compels you to do certain things when you're out there being that Kundalini ambassador that you are? I I really I don't. Oh, there's an echo. I don't feel anything. It's almost as if I talk and I have no control over it. It's not an actual feeling. When I start talking about Kundalini, it the words just come. Uh, and then afterwards, I find this lately, I've been uh, realizing after a session with someone or just a session, uh, a meeting, I don't remember. It's like it's gone. So it was very mindful at the time. So there's not really a, I, I don't get a message. Or <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I just want to congratulate you for going with that flow for feeling and allowing the kundalini to flow through you towards the, the education of another person. And, and, uh, and, and the, the fact that you don't create memory engrams uh, through the interaction just simply tells you that it's the kundalini that's doing it, not you. 
Yes. Okay. And, and so I think that you can you can rest assured that you are indeed, uh, you know, following the direction that the Kundalini is giving you to do. And and I want to congratulate you, Eileen, for doing that so well and so often, uh, you know, through your process. Thank so you, Chris. You're very welcome, my dear. And I'm going to put you in the blue again. Okay. And so, you know, with Eileen, Eileen is this wonderful ambassador. She's this beautiful uh, point of light in in Fort Myers, Florida. And uh, and for those of you in the Florida area, uh, I encourage you to to make contact with Eileen at e l o r o five five at yahoo dot com and. And if you'd like to talk with her more about her experiences with the Kundalini, she's she's done very well, and and she's been a student of mine since 2007. She's doing great. She's really doing well, and and um, I I I'm very happy to 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 be able to work with her. It's a blessing. And let's see, Amelia, is there a question? Hi, a- No, that's. No, I don't oh, have a question. Oh, That's... very good. Very good. Very yeah. good. Thank you. Okay, so so as we continue with with the OCK moving into to our ego wanting to control every aspect of how we live our life and the kundalini may be saying, "Well, Kristen, your ego wants to control every aspect. Well, hmm, this may not work for you. Here's something else to consider." then I will most certainly surrender to the control that the Kundalini wants to place over my egoic controls over my life. And I'm going to recommend that you do the same. It is not uh, enough to just go, okay, I got the Kundalini and I surrender everything and then go about doing things the way that, that you have always done things. I would, go, I would suggest that you make strong behavioral changes in how you are uh, in relation to what the kundalini is, is compelling you to do or be or think or, or react to or respond to. Okay. Really be discerning. Do not play with this energy. It's conscious. It knows you. And it will give you a, uh, how do I say it, uh, a corrective <laughs> suggestion. Sometimes... Sometimes it can be rough. Um, gosh, you know, I was I was homeless for like ten, twelve years uh, in in the early parts of my Kundalini uh, process because without a teacher, without information, you know, there weren't even cell phones back then. You know, I mean, when I <laughs> sounds terrible, but but yeah, yeah, people, there were cars though. We we weren't on horseback. But there wasn't any information uh, about the Kundalini, certainly not within my grasp. I did have one resource, even though it wasn't a Kundalini resource. It was a Tibetan uh, uh, by the name of T, that's the initial T period, Lobsang, L-O-B-S-A-N-G, Rampa, R-A-M-P-A, and uh, he's out of print. Uh, I, I believe some of his books are coming back into print because the popularity has not waned. And uh, he has some very good information about uh, the Tibetan Buddhist's way of approaching life. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's fairly wild stuff. And, uh, boy, I couldn't get enough of that in my early Kundalini refinement protocols that I didn't even know at the time were early Kundalini refinement protocols. So as I struggled to keep my ego in charge, uh, I continued to spiral out of my control. Uh, as, I, as I continued to just not control, the less control I had. As I continued to resist, the kundalini, the more resistance I encountered in my ability to resist the kundalini to the point where I found myself on the street without money, without food, without shelter, and without any kind of a, of a, of a disease like alcoholism or, 
or being a criminal or, or, or wanting, you know, I found myself a sane person living, which I think a lot of Kundalini people who Kundalini syndrome find themselves in. And uh, it took me a long time to be able to try and to understand what was going on within me. And because I had worked in the medical field, I knew I wasn't bipolar or schizophrenic or any of those terms. Uh, I knew that I didn't have OCD. I knew that, uh, so I, I knew some things that I didn't have, but I didn't know what I did have. And, and it would be a long time and a lot of karma to be balanced before I could come into a position uh, where I did understand and I did know and I was to um, to begin to surrender and to give myself into the process that the Kundalini was offering. And by doing that, I had to relinquish control over how I thought my life should be lived. And I had to begin to, to, to discern what the Kundalini was telling me. And, and for those of you that are already inside your Kundalini Awakening uh, protocol, uh, for those of you that, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I have a question. Yes. Is there a question? Uh-huh. I see. So uh, I guess I should just wait a moment because if I get into this stream, you know, it, I'll close my eyes. It's hard to get out of it. <laughs> I just opened my eyes for a moment and I saw a question there. So Amelia's uh, working with it. Okay. So for those of you who are already inside of your, your Kundalini, Is there a question, Amelia? Hello. Listening only. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. So for those of you that are already inside your Kundalini Awakening protocols, and, and by that I mean the, 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 the compulsions that the Kundalini is giving you, uh, know that surrender to this. This is, this is a really good thing that is happening to you. And, yes, it is taking over uh, aspects of the control of your of your uh, uh, patterns of probability, and that means you know the choices that you have uh, within any given subject of your life, and and I want you to really begin to to uh, to balance yourself within this, to realize what is occurring, and you don't have to become homeless. You don't have to do any of the things that I did. Because of, 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 I'm sure, my karma. And I had to do them because of, of I needed to know what it was to make every mistake that you could possibly make and then still come through it. So can, can anyone come through it. I'm not special. Any of you who are listening to this broadcast can come through it just the same or even better than I did. Okay? Uh, so... So, so please understand that. Please understand that that even though you want to control every aspect of your life, just the way your ego has always done so, but the Kundalini will step and say, step in and say, "Well, uh, Mr. Kristen, no, no, no. You need to listen to what me, your Kundalini, is now telling you, and it will communicate to you that way through the OCK, the obsessive compulsive Kundalini." And it will initiate controls over how you behave in your life with you or without you. <laughs> and I mean, with your permission or without your permission, it will initiate those controls. And if you really, really fight it, then you may end up the way I did in, my early, in the early aspects of my Kundalini awakening. Uh, so, so know this and understand this and, and be advised of this because it is not something that you don't want to go there have to be homeless and nothing against homeless people i mean a lot of people are being driven there through the the uh, the greed and the 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 se severe mistakes that uh, uh our our government and our political uh, uh parties are are inflicting upon this world um, but you can survive this you don't have to be homeless you can survive this and this if you surrender to this and if you surrender even the control of your everyday life, how you comb your hair, you know, uh, you know, how often you bathe, do you, do you keep your room clean or is it a mess? You know, even to those levels, listen to the Kundalini 
let the Kundalini speak to you. And the OCK may just straighten up that room, may just give you new levels of discipline that will help you in organizing your life in a, in a constructive, conducive way of having the Kundalini and living the new life that is being given to you. And it is a new life. It is not your old life. It's a new life, a new lease on life for some of you. For some of you who are, you know, who might be uh, inside of a, a, a difficult health care issue. You have like a disease. You're bedridden. You can only, you know, say you can only navigate the, 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 the web with your tongue. And you, you may be listening to this broadcast because you've heard of the great healing powers of the Kundalini. Well, it's true. It's absolutely true. And it can heal you, but it can't heal you if you're going to stand in the way. If you choose to stand in the way, it will not help you. It can hurt you then. It's kind of like trying to plug a piano with your thumb. One, it's not advised. Number two, it's not going to work. And number three, you're probably going to get burned. So realize that when you're looking at levels of control over your life while you're Kundalini. And you'll fight this sometimes, you know, often we, we, we will often fight to to have our control, to have our cake and eat it too, so to speak. It's like, oh, yes, I've got Kundalini and, and I can make it do this and I can make it do that. And don't believe that. This goes into some of the other things that I mentioned in another broadcast. You know, a lot of these these uh, uh, systems of of what I would call spiritual entertainment uh, they entertain the idea that you are in control of everything. You have all the choices you need to make, da 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 da. And, and yes, you do. You have a choice. You can fight the Kundalini if you want. You'll never be able to control it. You'll tell your friends that you're controlling it, and your ego may get get really big and says, "Oh yes, I'm controlling my Kundalini. Yes, I'm one of the few who can do that. Oh my gosh, I'm so strong and powerful." And it's not really true. Anybody with Kundalini will see that, and know that, and understand that about you, and just kind of either tolerate you or forgive you for, for the, you know, kind of giving out some misinformation there. Any of the people that are practicing things such as Enochian uh, magical systems or the Golden Dawn systems, you know, it's a huge ego ride. It's a huge ego ride. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest that you don't go there. Don't go into sorcery. Sorcery is an ego ride, and you're collecting karma in ways you cannot even understand at this point. So you don't go there. You don't go into sorcery. You don't try to use uh, exalted skills for self-aggrandizement or for self or for greed, or for control over other people. You don't do that. You don't cast spells on people. This is what I have a problem with, you know. Some of these witchcraft things, you know, it's like, oh, I want to fall in love with, with this man over here or this woman over there, and I need a spell. And so you're just robbing them of their own choice. And you've just collected amazing levels of karma. So you don't do that. You're not there to become a predator upon your fellow human being. So you don't try to control these things that way. So don't do those Enochian things. Don't become a sorcerer. Don't become Harry Potter, for crying out loud. You know, they had, I guess they had rules against, you know, uh, uh, doing magic on people that don't have magic. So I guess that's, I guess, you know. The author, I guess she kind of covered it that way, but most people don't have those rules and they're not constrained, uh, you know, by, by, a, by a mythical Dumbledore who will, who will say, oh, bad person, you know. Uh, there are no laws about that except the karma, the laws of karma, and you will pay. You will pay. And you, you may end up, you know, you know, someone who's being enslaved, you know, in some way, to have their, all, their, all their choices are taken away. And I would prefer that you not go there. But if you have to go, well, there you go. You know, 
I don't espouse any of these systems. Okay, I don't espouse Reiki in, in any of the major flavors that are offered that way either because there's always a level of ego there. How many Reiki uh, programs do you know of that say give up the ego? Reformat the ego. Not too many of them. I'm sure there are some, but not too many of them. And so I, you know, so I won't point you in the direction of Reiki either, whether it's Reiki Kundalini or, or Candy Cane Reiki or, you know, uh, uh, Rug Doctor Reiki. I mean, whatever, you know, comes to mind, uh, you, you need to really understand that you don't get to have ego-based controls over the Kundalini. It gets to control you. If you're an alcoholic, it will get to control you away from that. And it will control you away from that. It may let you go into that bar and drink, and drink but you may end up vomiting the rest of the night. So, you, you know, and, and eventually, and eventually it will take you out of the bars. And if you're, if you're interested enough to pay attention to what's going on and maybe find some information about the Kundalini, it will take you completely out of alcoholism. It can cure you of anything if you let it, if you sacrifice that control and say, Kundalini, I am yours. Let me serve you. It's kind of like saying, Kundalini, or, or it's a, kind of like saying, God, let me serve you. Let me be that person who you have touched and me give that grace to those around me. Let me give that grace to my environment, to the fellow animals, i.e., the animals, the environment, the plants, the water, the earth, the air. Let me be of service to you in whatever way you wish, and then you just basically listen and feel uh, the OCK come to you, that obsessive compulsion that the Kundalini can bring to you. Think about that. Now, if you have any questions about this, and you I would have questions. I mean, I would have had questions if I were like two or three years into my process instead of 24. Uh, question, I, would, I encourage you to ask if, <laughs> if Blog Talk Radio is, is, is allowing you to even hear this. Uh, and for those of you that have, that have persevered through this, this uh, particular uh, broadcast, uh, once again, I apologize for the big space in the middle of it. Uh, evidently, uh, everybody went offline, or at least a good portion of the people, myself included, went right offline, and yet I still got the Skype recording red up here, and so I, it's kind of interesting. Uh, so if you would like to ask a question, please feel free to do so. The number is 347 934 area code 347 and for those for those listening in the archives, once again, thanks again for persevering. And for those, for those listening uh, live, I would like to thank you also for persevering. Um, I'm going to bring Amelia on. Okay, Amelia. Hello. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Oh, yes, I can hear thank you. Thank God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you? Uh, <laughs> Can you give people an idea of how you have dealt with uh, OCK, Obsessive Compulsive Kundalini? Okay, well, it's actually interesting because I wouldn't have recognized it at the beginning of my awakening and even before my awakening. Well, first of all, when I was younger, I did have OCD. I had, you know, horrible behavior patterns that I used to have to go through. Oh, my God, rituals. I'd have to walk a particular way. Oh, I could make a big long list for you. And I pulled myself out of that when I was very, very young. And then... You know, and it took a long time. But anyway, then when I, when the Kundalini began to awaken, actually more before my Kundalini event, I began to have compulsions, stuff about, you know, giving up meat, about going into a church, about the way I used to peel carrots and prepare food for my family. I mean, I can particularly remember the carrots peeling the carrots and cutting them in a very particular way and also at that time starting to be fearful that what I used to experience as a, as a younger person was coming back. I'm just thinking how wonderful if I had had this information at the time. <laughs> but anyway, I didn't. So um, 
there was a lot of that sort of thing happened for me. But I began to realize that some of the things that I was being, you know, that I was having this compulsion to do were actually, um, I began to have a sense of um, following it as being a good thing. I mean, I didn't know about Kundalini, you see, Chris, at the time. So uh, let's take the carrots and those kinds of things, for example. I knew it was a compulsion, and I began to realize it was different to when I was a child. And I began to realize that there was goodness in it and that there was something good for my family. When I went to the church, when I get a compulsion to go into the church, I used to resist it and go, what? And then I began to follow it, and it was always a good outcome. And so, I mean, when I look back now, I can see that in lots of ways this was preparing me for giving up control of things that I liked to control. And yeah, Kundalini began to expand that, and as I began to, you know, um, come into um, the awakening event, and then I began to understand a lot more of what was happening, you know, more and more my control has been given over to Kundalini. I mean, Kundalini controls my life now. I've had amazing compulsions, stuff that happens in my day-to-day life, and then big things as well, you know. I do, um, I do. Yeah. And that's great. That's really, really good. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. And I'm going to switch us on over here to Rosemary. And, and uh, Rosemary, I understand that a little while ago uh, you had an experience at a, at, a, at a restaurant that we probably shouldn't name, but you had an experience where you were uh, kind of compelled to do certain things within that. Do you remember that? What I'm with the waitress and yeah. So what happened? Pay our bill, and I was talking with the hostess, and she looked at my wrist and said, "Oh, what a beautiful bracelet!" And it's a bright red, or this on, on this left, right hand, blue. And she said, "The mother would love that," and it really was in a sense, my compulsive talking, probably, I would say. But I said to her, it's energy. And I showed her the one on my arm with the, the, the red. And I encouraged her to uh, support her mother and her mother's uh, love of that. And I know the kundalini energy and what Chris and I have talked about. And I I really spent a good bit of time talking with her and listening quickly inside of what to say. And I gave her the, um, the, the website and uh, told her about Kundalini, and, and uh, she was just amazed, and she just smiled with just love in her heart and said, you are a lovely lady, you know. And it was she who was the lovely person who was so open and she was absolutely correct about you, Rosemary. Now, there was another incident that you had in Minnesota, and and uh, I would like you to talk about it. Too. Thank you. Uh, that was, I had been to an evening, a couple of hours, a woman who has an evening for peace once a month and beautiful meditation and our meditation time. And it was about 11 o'clock, and I'm, that's a good 45 minutes from home. It was winter time. And in Minnesota, I was driving along and I came, uh, I was on a a major highway and the thought direction go to Applebee's. It was Applebee's and it was on the other side of the highway. And I said, not thinking of where it was coming from, I just thought, a silly idea. I want to go home. I'm really tired. And I got to the red light and it hadn't gone away. And I just said, okay, I turned left, turned around, went into the restaurant and it, it was 11. It wasn't very busy. Um, and I, I said, okay, I'm in here. I'll have a cup of tea. That would be fine. And then the young gal took care of me. I said, oh, I really should buy something. So I ordered some fruit, and I'm doing that, and I'm figuring, okay, now I've done this, whatever this must be. I'm ready to go and ask her for my uh, ticket. And, and she came back, and she said, you know, we shut down the uh, all the – that accounting stuff, and she said, "I'll I'll take care of this for you." And I just was a little embarrassed and sad. And uh, to to so 
and I had no cash with me. That was the problem. So I, I, I got home, and I called back the next day to commend her supervisor and to let them know how touching that was. Now, when I shared this with Chris and later, right away he said, it was your radiance that was needed there. Now, I was not aware of that. I was trying to find some logical, ego reason for it. And I'm glad that I was open sufficiently to follow through and be touched and be trained by that and be out of my compulsions for practicality and terms of, of getting home and getting to bed because I was tired. And, and quite, it was an amazing experience. And I, he reminds me of that now and then like this. Well, I, uh, yeah, uh, Rosemary, it, it's very beautiful. Uh, that that is something that that uh, even the Kundalini people don't uh, always understand is 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 how the radiance uh, the, the Kundalini will want you to leave your radiance in a place or in a chair, even on a park bench or or somewhere. Uh, it will compel you to go so that it can leave a level of, shall we just say, liquid light in a restaurant or on a person. Uh, I believe the radiance was for the, the waitress who was there and who had helped you and was, who was being kind enough to, 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 to help you with the bill and things of that nature. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the way. This is what I'm talking about. This is Rosemary was able to listen to it, able to listen to to the Kundalini compel her to do these things. Now it looks like I'm getting a little bit of a weirdness once again from Blog Talk Radio, and I'm going to bring Eileen on. Eileen, can you hear me? Can you? Wow. Well, it says it's recording, and so I'm just going to continue on. Uh, for those of you that may have been disconnected, I don't really know what to tell you about all this. This is kind of weird. but uh, I can hear you, Chris. Oh, thank God. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, uh, <laughs> God, I can tell my Kundalini really wants me to just go into the zone and give all this information, but <laughs> and that may be what's screwing up blog talk, for all I know. Uh yeah, perhaps it is. <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually it's wonderful to you know, to hear Rosemary speaking of, of that and to remember all the times that such has occurred for me as well. And it's it's what you said about the radiance is something that um I'm only beginning to understand in recent times. Um myself I really it's didn't a- understand it. Yeah, yeah, well, radiance, not too many people really understand radiance. So you really won't get any material in the, in the yogic test, text. Maybe in, the, in the, uh, the Rig Veda. The Rig Veda may talk about this. And, and I think, you know, we could, we could talk to Srikant about that. He's, he's our resident Kundalini kind of expert with, with regards to the, uh, some of the ancient Sanskrit understandings. And so, Srikant, if you're listening to this in the archives, hey, you know, uh, let us know uh, your your opinion of this, too. What am I hearing? So, yeah, we'll just go here. Okay, so if you have any questions, I will, I'm, I'm a little hesitant now because even though I see uh, we have – you know, Aileen, Aileen and Amelia and the other person who's listening, uh, I'm a little cautious with thinking that we're actually being heard. Uh, I think that we are being recorded, but if, uh, if you have any questions about this, and if you're on Facebook, you can go to Kundalini Awakening! Uh, exclamation point. It's a group there. You can ask me there. I'll be happy to answer your questions about it. If you'd like to join the on a Yahoo Groups uh, network, you can go to Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 uh, at yahoogroups.com. You can also contact me on the YouTube network, and that would be Kristen.Kundalini on YouTube. 
and you you know you can you can even ask a question maybe leave a question after one of the videos uh, or you can reach me at my email at k f i r e f o r a l l at yahoo dot com and and I'll answer your questions directly so uh at this time, I'm going to end this one a little bit earlier because I'm a little unsure about what's going on with Blog Talk Radio. And uh, John can well, hear you, Susan, just to let you know. <laughs> John, John, John can hello, I John. can hear you. Yeah, yeah. He's inside <laughs> in the other room, and you're back online for a while. I should have told you that, actually. I, I'm what? I'm back online? You're back on his computer for a while. He can hear you on his computer now for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. I, I, yeah. And I'm hopeful that Eileen can hear too. Eileen, can you hear? I Maybe should not. have, and I would think. I don't want to spend too much there. time figuring out whether people are hearing. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and I'm going to ask you to give your announcements again, if you would, Amelia. Yes, I will, of course, Cousin. Um, maybe actually I'll begin this time with just letting people know where they can go if they want to make a donation. I'll give you the address. It's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com and up on the right-hand side you will find a donate button. Um, in relation to the um, seminars, let me tell you again about the first one that is happening and that is happening in New York and there are places available. So um, get in contact with me. Um, it's happening on the 22nd and the 23rd of March, um, 35 miles north of New York, sitting in a very nice um, venue overlooking the River Hudson, um, kundalinimatters at gmail.com. And then the following weekend in Ireland, there is another seminar, a two-day seminar, residential, again, um, led by CRISM. And as I said earlier, this is an excellent um, thing to come for if you are already on the Kundalini path or if you are seeking to be on the Kundalini path. And it's a way of exploring the activities of enlightenment within the sacred ground of ancient Ireland because that's where the seminar is based, in Newgrange. And that is a very, very special and sacred place in Ireland, and it fits in beautifully with the Kundalini. So do come if you have any interest at all in coming. Please listen to, to you know, maybe the Kundalini speaking to you, and do get in touch with me, and I would be delighted to talk with you about um, about coming. The address again is kundalinimatters at gmail dot com. Thank you, so thank you, Amelia. Yeah. And it's coming, you know, where it's not long now and we'll be into March. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm going to be in New York. And I'm looking very much forward to that as well. Thank you, Amelia. I, I thank you very much for, for your, you know, for everything that you do for so many Kundalini people. And I'd like to thank Eileen uh, for, for helping, you know, in the many, many ways that she does. And I'd also like to thank Rosemary Goliath for for coming online and, and, and coming out here to the ashram and learning and, and really beginning to develop and mature within her Kundalini awakening process. And I'd like to thank all the current listeners that hopefully are still hearing this. I'd like to thank John and Amelia for, for supporting this and for, for making this even happen. Thank you both John and Amelia and in Ireland in the kingdom of Kerry. Um, Thank you, everyone, who is on the many different communities that we have who may be listening to this. And I will look forward to having another Kundalini conversation with you next week. Thank you for listening.